Hello and welcome to the Comedy Slam. That was a bit overexcited, wasn't it? Um, I'm Adrian Lacey. <laughs> Speaking, that's not my style at all. If only you knew me. Um, where was I? Oh yes. Where am I? In the southeast of England. That's what I was about to say. Uh, his himself is in the Midlands of the same nation. Shane O'Connor. Hello. And hello. Not that I was inviting <laughs> you to say hello, but um, there's some degree of evidence that you're here, I suppose, or at least recording know. with me. Never know when to come in. Never know when to come in. I never know. I, I, I can't do right for doing wrong. No. Well, that's what your wife says as well. And um, we're unscripted, and I don't think anyone would ever doubt that. You drink your purple, as I can see you on screen, and fortunately our listeners only have to hear you. I did something this week that reminded me of a, a very funny link um, DJ Mark Radcliffe did years ago. And mm. I... I don't doubt it was true because I think that's how he's built his career and it's all about undersell and understatement and self-deprecation. Um, he said, he started this link, he said, I did something today that I thought it, it shouldn't be possible to do and it turned out he'd shut his head in his with the car door <laughs> on the frame of the car. And I, I laugh only because I can imagine myself doing that. Because only this week, a couple of days ago, and I've still got concussion, I hit my own head against a brick wall in my own flat. Now, you should know where the walls are. And the light w was on. No one was at home, obviously, in my head. Can we it have a bit of context hurt. to this? What, what, when can, you say well, you... There was full nudity. Um, <laughs> but then... <they're not laughs> that would drive anybody to hit their head up the wall, wouldn't it? <laughs> I caught myself in the mirror. That's not the only thing I caught. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, actually, I was showering, so the nudity makes sense. I mean, oh, okay. context, please. Yeah. And the wall is a divide. It's my fault for having a so-called feature shower. The feature apparently now is you can hit your head against a brick wall. What, what's a feature shower? What's, that? what's that all about? I it? don't know. It means they charge another few grand for you to buy the flat. Uh, it was all in wow. with it. Wow. Yeah, you might want to install one next time you move. This is the uh, this is the feature shower, and you'll notice that it's got uh, a shower, and uh, <laughs> that's the feature. I features very said, heavily. It's got, it's got a slightly dented brick wall. That's a feature yeah. as well. <laughs> notice Head the blood shaped. trickling down. <laughs> We've kept it how it was on the day it happened. Yeah. Authentic. Oh, well done to you. I know, well, uh... just ridiculous. You can imagine, I use some words which aren't in the Book of Common Prayer. They are in some common books, but not that one. It doesn't beat... Uh, who was the bloke from... Was it the bloke from E17 who ran himself over with his own car? <laughs> I shouldn't laugh. So was it he Harvard? left the handbrake so off, he, um, I'm guessing. No, I think... It, no, I'm sure he was doing some work on it or something. Oh, no. And, uh, and it slid off a... Did he slid off a jack or a ramp or something like that and God. he ran himself over? I mean, you wouldn't describe it like that anyway, would you? Do you know what I mean? You'd say, oh, I've had an accident with the car. You wouldn't go, I've driven I've driven over. Hello, can I have an ambulance, please? What's the problem? <laughs> I've driven over myself. Sorry. <laughs> Hang on. Have you, have you been drinking, sir? Are you concussed? Yeah. Yeah, so no, I am now. Um, but yeah. Oh, well, I mean, are you all right? I mean, are you better? Well, now, you, you? you tell me. I don't think I'm best placed to answer that question. No. I have. No, which... If I lean into the camera, you can't see this, dear listener, but you wouldn't want to. Oh, you don't that? you see that lump above your head? No, that's my brains. No, no, it's your headphones. Sorry, hang on. <laughs> you're, not, you're not wearing those right, by the way. No one, you can't hear me properly. Well, uh, you what? You what, don't wear one on, on the front on. and one on the back. <laughs> not the... <laughs> it's a push me pull you set of headphones. Oh, well, if it all goes a bit wonky tonight, then then that's, that's it's the really concussion. Excuse, always, isn't it? You're yeah. always like that guy. Yeah, yeah. I featured in my shower a bit earlier on, so, uh, <laughs> so there you go. Oh, uh, talking about stuff that's happening, uh, you know, mm. we, we always like to keep you up to date with some comedy news. And I thought of you actually because we were having a conversation um, about audiences and, and sitcoms and things like that, mm. and whether you need them or whether you don't need them. And of course, with with COVID, I never know to say COVID or COVID. What was I mean, the COVID? Is that is that in the same the, league as Bath and Grass? Is that because I don't no, know if one of those? Well, you look, you're speaking to a southerner, but no, I don't. I think I don't think there's variation regionally. I so it's, it's all just what, what's the BB, what do the BBC say? Because they they would like because <laughs> I know how much you value. Oh yeah, the corporate whatever opinion. they do, I'll do the opposite one. Exactly. So I'm going to say covered. So you do, do the you right thing. Do you remember when when were you working there? 
um, when they were when they said when they sent an email around telling you how to pronounce Beijing, and no. they said you have to pronounce it Beijing. Mm. Uh, well, I asked a Chinese person that. No, because because I'm I'm dull enough to be, be no, I'm interesting enough to be interested in such things, and mm. and the the BBC guidance is wrong. And what you often hear on air at the opposite end, people say Beijing or uh, Beijing, and both of those are wrong. It's it's, but it's subtle, and it? uh, it's something like Beijing, Qing. Oh, like Qi. Yeah, more that oh, right. sort of sound. Okay. Well, whatever they said, I said the opposite, and I wouldn't say the other one because <laughs> I thought so, nobody tells me what to do. It's so childish, isn't it? Yes. Well, that's you all over, isn't it? I say Hong Kong, and. Uh, <laughs> What? That's how you pronounce Instead of the word Beijing. Birmingham. All right. <laughs> Peking, say, you mean. I, You're peeking I'd just, just say it happened in Hong Kong and just be done with it. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, anyway, sorry. Anyway, we were saying about um, audiences and, hmm. um, you know, whether they're needed or not. And then this story popped up to say that Have I Got News, they're obviously struggling with this because being a panel show, it's a, a bit of a, well, they think it's a bit of a, um, a necessity to have an audience. And they're, mm. they're trying to figure out ways about how they can have an audience. And one, <laughs> one of the ways they thought about doing it is put the panel in one room and then mm. put, <laughs> put the audience in another room. And we, we're hoping they're going to open the door between the two so they can hear each other. Otherwise, well, you, you do want to... <laughs> is that because it's all right for hoi polloi to catch disease off each other because they're just, quote, ordinary people yeah. who are expendable. But we can't have the stars catching something... Of uh, of those people who come off the streets, yeah, and pay their wages. I, 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 yeah, I mean, I did. If if you, I don't know. You do you do kind of wonder, don't you? Like, say, if you if you put, although I suppose would they do every other seat or something like that, so they'll socially distance. I read somewhere that some, and I don't know if this is true or not because it sounded a bit anecdotal to me. But I read somewhere in the week that there was a company somewhere in the UK that wants wants workers when they return to to park socially distance in the car. <laughs> Well, so I, their cars are every other space. Like, I mean, that works in the assumption they're all going to get out of their cars together. Do you know? <laughs> at the same time, on my first whistle, you will all get out of your cars. Everyone with the registration letter ending in P, <laughs> come out now. <laughs> or is it they think the cars can catch COVID, as I pronounce it, off each other? Yeah. If they're parked Co- too close. Carved. Oh, carve it. Oh, you got their that's first. Right, yeah. Darn, I think it's time to move on. We are putting on the slab of comedy, that is our notional place that we uh, dissect a different comedy show bit, TV, radio, uh, digital, whatever form it arrives in um, each week. Um, We are putting on the slab this week uh, an episode of Parks and Recreation. Mm. If I remember correctly, Series 3, Episode 1. I think that's right. Absolutely, yeah. Bang on, yeah. Um, and I managed not to have in front of me the... Oh, it's Go Big or Go Home. Is that right? If I remember that That's correctly. That's right. It is, yeah, it Thank is. You. I'm so glad you're there. It's not a phrase I often use, Shane. Um, now, I think you might well be better placed, probably are, to talk about this series, because I saw one early on, maybe even the very first one, and then, as is the way of me being a Unitarian, or whatever I'm called for just watching one episode... Uh, and then moving on to other shows, um, I I didn't watch it again, and I, which is why I put it on the slab last time. Now, before I forget, uh, this has got four production credits, production company credits, uh, Deedle D Productions. I hope you're going to help us out with these, Jane. Free Mulan, I'm going to guess. Don't mm. I know Fre- Fremulan. I, I'm going to guess the second time. Three Arts Entertainment and Universal Media Studios, or UMS. Have you been? Oh, no, because they're not British firms, so you haven't been able to no. look at Company's House. No, sometimes you get a website for them, but I didn't, I didn't get the time to uh, to have a shuft at this one. But you're right. I mean, I've, I've watched before Comedy Slab, way before Comedy Slab, I watched six six series, the first Phew. six series of this. There are only seven, I think. Um, but I've only but, watched it through once, so it, I didn't really remember the episode that we slabbed anyway. So it was kind of – it was almost like coming through it a little bit fresh, although I kind of knew – you know the characters and 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 what they were supposed to be, really. But should we have a clip and then and yeah. I can I can give you a headline and and uh, away uh, we go. Headline. Anyway, clippage. Uh, yes. Although you might need to help me with the scene set, but um, series two, I'm surmising because this is the first of series three. Uh, so there's a sort of catch up, uh, thirty seconds minute at the top of this show. Um, 
it, it is about a parks and recreation department, department. within the yeah. what well, what we would call a council. What do they call it in the states? A municipal, blah blah blah. I oh, didn't they yeah. call it a council? Though? Do they call it a yeah. council? I, uh, um... I've suddenly worried myself. They might not. They don't refer to council estates or council housing. They talk about projects, don't they? But um, uh, anyway, sort of public sector, but local public sector. Um, so that's the setting, and um, it's the a delightfully named town, not necessarily spelt as it sounds, or as you might imagine it sounds. Pawnee uh, is referenced. P a w n double e. Oh ho! I can tell you. I can tell you something about that anyway. If you wanted, if you're interested. Oh, should we do that quickly before I forget? Oh, okay. Um, well, basically, it's um, it, it's a it's like kind of one of those heritage names, isn't it, Pawnee? I think. Um, I think there are about eight, no, six. I think. Uh, yeah, there are six Pawnees. There are actual towns called Pawnee. I think mm. the this, the series is based on Muncie. Uh, they reckon it's it's set it's based on Muncie in Indiana in the same in the same state, but right. yeah, it's a Native American origin. Apparently, there's there are there are Pawnee people and a Pawnee language, and that's where the heritage comes from. On that, as in uh, Native Americans. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, yeah, that yeah. makes sense with a double E, which doesn't look very American, as in yeah, yeah, yeah. More but there are six in different states all around, the, like the same around the cluster um, where this where Indiana is. It like in. Uh, um, various various areas there are Pawnees, so okay thank you for but i think the they get that a lot don't they in america there's a lot it's like springfield the reason the simpsons is set in springfield is because there are about 23 springfields in america right. most states most states have it so you don't really know where it's set it's just right. set in springfield my favorite is buffalo springfield with neil young in it <laughs> <laughs> just by the by my favorite's bruce <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Google that or Google it not. So the uh, leading character is Leslie Nope, and um, we'll probably talk about her uh, a bit more, I'm, I'm quite sure. But she's sh- sort of the uh, leader of this team. And at the beginning of the show, after the scene set, uh, sort of picking up from the end of series two, when there's been shutdown, we now realise they're reopening. You wouldn't have much of a series, I guess, in shutdown uh, if they carried on indefinitely. But, uh, and this is something we can all identify with, uh, they're getting their budgets cut and, uh, you know, times are very tough. For instance, they're only allowed two basketball Basketball teams? Yeah, it is basketball, isn't it? Um, so, you know, <laughs> it's not like you're going to get a league uh, the Pawnee League of um, Basketball. Anyway, um, Leslie, uh, the boss, has a cunning plan which she's sharing with her colleague Anne, who has been dating. Oh, there's the, the boss boss over Leslie, isn't there? Um, played by Rob Lowe, uh, mm-hmm. a guy called Chris. Um, and he's, he's asked Anne out on a date. She originally said no, but Leslie's giving her another reason, a sort of more selfless reason to say yes to Chris, because this is her cunning plan. Okay, I like what you're wearing, but I need it to be 300% sexier. Do you have any of those shirts that look wet all the time? Or or like a metal bikini? You know what's always sexy? Fingerless gloves. What about if I wear this normal sane outfit? Yeah, okay, but you're gonna have to eat something sexy then, like a banana. For dinner? Well, what's sexy food? Asparagus? No. You know what's sexy? Turkey chili. Mm. Yum. Mm. And how exactly am I supposed to casually steer the conversation towards the parks department budget? Okay, it's totally easy. Tell you what, you be Chris, I'll be you, I'll show you how it's done. Okay. <clears throat> and Perkins, you are wonderful and amazing and I'm happy to be here with you. Thank you, Chris. I'm wearing a tuxedo vest with no shirt on underneath. Uh-oh. Can I get you a drink? I love every single beverage in the world. I would like some wine. And oops, my vest popped open. Just like the budget needs to pop open, and you need to pour it into my parks department. Great. Yeah, it kind of works, doesn't it, really, I suppose, as a as a metaphor, is it? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's yet more nudity, isn't it? Or partial yeah, nudity. Yeah, I never thought of it it's like graceful. that. Um, can, I, can I just mention... Um, there's Amy Poehler, who plays the lead, Leslie Nope, and Rashida Jones, who plays Anne Perkins. Do you know who Rashida Jones is? I feel I sh- 
sure. Well, I recognise her. I've seen her in other things. Is it something? Yeah, you, she, you, oh, she's you quite successful. Quite a successful actress, really. She's um, she had her own series and all sorts of stuff. Um, she's actually Quincy Jones' daughter. No way. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, I just. Um, she doesn't really I mean, I need to work, I would have thought, but she's very good. <laughs> it depends what Dad's like, doesn't it, really? Um, yeah, well, there's that, yeah. You know, whether he's, whether he's generous with his money. And I just loved her Rob Lowe impression there. I thought she was, you know, or her Chris, uh, Chris Traeger impression that she was doing there. And I thought it was really, really, really quite good. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, oh, uh, I haven't really got a headline. Um, oh, well, about time I think, I think it's quite a difficult one to do. do a, have you got a headline? Have you thought of one? No, because the rules are that you have to come up with one. <laughs> you got to have a system, as you would say. Yeah, well, my system is I, I haven't got a headline. <laughs> well, your um, system is wrong and corrupt. I've got one. Go for it. Parks and recreation, it's like a walk in the park. That's good, right? It's best I could do, short notice. Pro- I haven't got one a second ago. No, I mean, it's flattering. It's, oh, it, so you, mean. you don't end up stepping in something, hopefully. Do you know, I don't. This, to me, this is, is like the Bee Gees. This this program is on paper. It shouldn't work, should it? You know, like you go right. Okay, I've got three white blokes with beards, <laughs> prominent teeth, singing in falsetto. Do you want to sign them? <laughs> no, thanks. Well, put like that, right? And this is the same. I, I I don't know what it is about it that makes me like it. I don't know what it, but I do. But I do. Tell, tell me how you feel about it. Because this is another fly-on-the-wall jobby, isn't it, this one? Well, and what's that? Oh, as in mockumentary. Well, that's yeah, the yeah. other thing. You, In theory, you don't like mockumentaries. So that's back to your um, Bee Gees theory, isn't it? Yeah. Um, although although it's a gentler mockumentary, isn't it, this one? Don't you think? Is they, they it's Apart from the pieces to camera. Yeah. But apart from the pieces to camera that she does, they don't. They largely don't. They don't play to the cameras, do they? Well, there's one really. look to camera towards the end. Yeah. Um, when he uh, Geese is trying to um, win back his former girlfriend. Because you know this came out of the office in a roundabout kind of way. Because well, that doesn't the, shock me. No, the people who made this made the American Office. Yeah, which went its own way, as you've told us before. Yeah. If, mm. the, well, the first series didn't. The first series was true, and. I read what they said. These guys who made this actually said the reason that we did that and kept it true to the original um, thing with Ricky Gervais that it was because we wanted to see whether the network had got the stomach to go with it, kind of thing. So, and then we went our own way with it. Um, but yeah, so so he owes to the office this one directly. I, I would have thought. But go mm. on. How do you feel about it? Tell me. Well, first time through. I uh, see. I've got. Next to no recall of the, the, that one episode I watched all that time ago. And I was hugely disappointed because everything was so large, as in large performances, everything exaggerated, everything mm. stiff body movements and so self-consciously playing for a laugh that it had the perverse old fool that I am had the opposite effect on me. It's like the, the harder they try to make me laugh, the more I'm going to sit there with my arms folded. Mm. Um, which I'm not proud of. Um, they've all worked very hard on it and blah, blah, blah. But I, uh, second time through, well, of course, I'm not surprised then that the way they play it. So that's not a shock, um, naturally enough, second time round. But it's still barely raising a smile Be, uh, for, for the same reason, really. The performance is so big. They're so big that it made me think it felt like it was um, a theatrical production where the cameras had gone in close and they were showing us, you know, facial gestures and movements that were meant to get you if you were sitting in the back of the gods, yeah. like I yeah. do, on, in the cheap seats, uh, not rattling your jewellery. And then um, and it just felt totally out of scale with how TV works, close-ups and relative subtlety and so on. Do you know, I'd love to be able to say, oh, objection, my lord, I disagree, but I can see exactly what you're saying, and that's part of the, the quandary that I'm in, that, that I kind of think, and I don't know why. It, there is something about it that makes me f- forgive all of those things that you said, but those things that you say, I think, are absolutely bang on the button. I think all of the mm. characters are played large. They're written large as well, aren't they, don't you think? It's like the, mm. you know, the Ron Swanson character. They didn't reference it in here, but I remember from watching the series that – He's got a real thing about he just eats red meat. Oh, there are, um, there's a th- 
cutaway uh, of him piling into something. Yeah, he mentions, off the he bone. says, he's, yeah, he says fish, he's don't eat fish, is it? Because it's practically a vegetable. <laughs> You know? Yeah. Now, when you deliver it, I'm laughing, and yeah. I'll probably laugh if I watched it with you. But um, provided we both were wearing our clothes, yeah. Well, no, actually, I might laugh harder if you well, were I think you'd clothes. laugh heartily, <laughs> as does your wife naked. on a regular basis. <laughs> Although, having said that, you know, I kind of, on the one hand, I say the Ron Swanson character is quite unbelievable, but then I actually, in the ooh, nineteen late 80s, early 90s, I actually worked with a guy who was quite like that. Um, mm. Although, if you can imagine him, he was from the black country. I won't mention who he is, but if you imagine he was from the black country. He had a, he had a very big, thick moustache in the, in the same way, and, it, and he had a very deadpan way of talking in, in the same kind. So there is a degree of realism for that for me, because I kind of think, well, I, know, I mean, that's just, you know, mm. one, one chance in however many, isn't it, really? And that kind of... That kind of helps me a bit. But I don't really know what it is, but you're right. I mean, they're a great cast, aren't they? They think? They're, they're, I mean, they're, well, I'm, I mean, look, the, the thing we can't tell is um, what they're directed, well, how much they're being yes. directed in that direction, if you yeah. pardon the yes. uh, repetition. But, um, yeah, I get the feeling they're all delivering. What I will say about it is utterly consistent. No one stands out. Because it's all larger than life. Um, so in that sense, they, it, it's an alternative parallel universe where people behave like that. Yeah. But I can't quite bring myself to... I, I probably should be kinder. <laughs> Great cast. Well, I... They probably are. They most probably are, but they're not great for me uh, in this context. But there's no reason to think they couldn't deliver whatever else they were directed in another direction. Right. I mean, when again. you but when you look at it again on paper, I mean, I mean, Rob Lowe, a veteran, isn't he? Part of part of the Brat Pack for people who don't don't remember him. But I mean, he's a, he's a he's a, he's sort of lucky. He's still here the way they used to party, you know. Even Emilio Estevez and Charlie Sheen, and he's that he's that generation, isn't he? He's, right. He had real substance abuse problems. Brought himself back from that. You got Rob Lowe in there. Adam Scott, I think, who who he plays Ben Wyatt. I think he's you know he's been in V. Oh, he's he's been number in two kind of thing. Yeah, he's had his own series, Party Down. He's, um, you know, he's been all kinds of stuff. Chris Pratt is massive in films. He plays Andy Dwyer. He's in the Guardians of the Galaxy, the Avengers films, Jurassic World. Um, Aubrey Plaza, who plays April, she's gone on to do films in her own right as well. We mentioned Nick Offerman, Ron Swanson. Aziz Ansari, we saw him in his own show recently. Yes. We didn't. Can anyone remember like what that was called? We, we didn't, didn't like it, it didn't we? Uh, Master of None, wasn't it, I think, wasn't it? Master Sounds of None, wasn't right. it? Yeah. Um, Rashida Jones, we've already ma mentioned, and, and Amy Poehler, who's, I mean, she's a, a veteran of Saturday Night Live, uh, which, again, doesn't kind of translate, because we don't get that over here. Mm. Um, but, yeah, I mean, like they're all names, or they've all gone on to do other great stuff or have done great stuff before, so you kind of think, on paper, this should be, you know, it should be stellar, shouldn't it, really? But, um, but it kind of is for you, in a way. I, do you know? I like it. I mean, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go nuts about it. I mean, I like it, and I, and I watched it, and I enjoyed it, and I kind of got into it, and I, I went with it. But you know, I wouldn't go. Oh, it's a classic. It's because you're right. It's not. It's not. I mean, there are funny lines in it. I thought. I thought. I thought there were bits where I kind of laughed out loud when when um, uh, the Leslie Nope character was saying to Anne Perkins about that from that clip you just played. Um, she said, would you be happy to do things that a prostitute does, <laughs> minus the money? <laughs> <laughs> Again, I'm laughing more at you telling me, the, reminding me of the gag. You know, um, it's, did you, didn't you like it? It's, it's, it's got a gentleness, hasn't it? I mean, I hate to use the last of the summer wine for, for UK audiences, but that kind of, that kind of you know, or... or um, uh, what was that one that you like? The I'm Judy not going to mention as time goes by because oh, you, you always get angry. The wall, that is, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but hasn't, do, you, do, you, do you feel the gentleness with it or not? Well, yeah, it's definitely gentle. Um, and, and innocent. And, yes. And if you had had a hard day and you just wanted a little bit of chewing gum for the eyes, um, it's a nice, you know, beer in the hand, feet up on the, on the footstool. <laughs> 
<laughs> right, on. So I've got chewing gum in my eyes, beer in my hand, <laughs> feet up on the footstool. Where's, where's Where my head? Go? Oh, yeah, banging it in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> on the feature wall. Um, yeah, so it's got its place. I, I always wonder as well, because it's American, whether, and because of the way that they produce these things, I always wonder whether it suffers from um, large numbers of writers getting involved. I never know whether that's a good or bad thing, do you? We've never successfully done it over here, have we? I mean, they, they, they have serious-sized teams. Um, they can have 12 people around a table, can't they, easily? Mm. Um, although, mm. having said that, well, I was hoping you were going to illuminate me on um, the writers here and the creators who probably create a stroke writers of maybe of earlier series. Well, I can tell you that, that there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 producers listed on this, which is which <laughs> can't be good for business, can it, really? I mean, I don't know how... I mean, you know, who's making the decisions with 14 producers? You know, they're, they're, I mean, they're various... Um, two named producer roles, like you know, executive producer, yeah, and, consulting uh, producer. And what's a yeah. consulting producer as opposed to? <laughs> mm, yeah, well, without knowing how they work, I mean, they might be the best of friends. You know me and my positive thinking. <laughs> they might yes. love each other and hold hands and do a team hug at the beginning of the day. Yes, but I, I never know whether that's. I, I don't know whether you need that has to happen to write American style comedy, and couldn't happen to write British style comedy. I do wonder whether that whether that helps or hinders you know having that many writers having a having a big writing um well, although yeah those are producers rather than writers yeah there's only one writing credit yeah plus two um created by credits so greg daniels and michael uh sure i'm guessing it might be scary. yeah and then of course mm. it depends how much he's improvised how much is is worked out as they go along because mm. it's different isn't it now you know the days of film people would go oh the cost the cost of the film you don't have yeah. that now because you, you keep can, rolling yeah you just you know it's, it's cheap isn't it really to do that so i don't i don't really know but i do wonder whether that you know the the, the writing style or the way of writing is different and therefore it doesn't translate as much i mean for me it's 21 22 minutes long mm. It absolutely it was a it was a pleasure to watch because it flew for me. I mean, I was just I couldn't believe. It. I thought, oh, there's only like four minutes left of this. I can't believe it. You know, when I finally checked the time, did did yeah. did did that help with you at all, or was it? Um, well, actually, I hadn't spotted it was that short. So uh, in my head, I'm probably thinking a standard TV half hour, which uh, depending on whether it's commercial or not, obviously that would be commercial being America. Um, but over here, I think of sort of 28 minutes, 29 minutes. Rightly or wrongly, um, was it so, was it a long twenty one minutes for you or a short? Uh, you, it was a twenty eight minute long twenty one minutes. Okay, but okay. Um, you know, yeah, I don't really want to lay into it because I think, as I say, it it, it has its audience, and this show is all about our opinions on the day, and and people should try it if they haven't already. Uh, it's it's well made, and it's a good example of what it's setting out to do. Just didn't. Tickle my funny bone. Not the way it was played, but as we've heard, you know, twice you've delivered lines, and I think, yeah, I could laugh at that. Yeah, maybe it's, maybe it's delivery. Should we, should we have a, we've got another clip anyway. Yeah, yeah, we should we have another do. clip and and see see whether their delivery works. Yes, uh, like Amazon Prime. <laughs> now I, I've given us a bit of basketball here, and uh, I hope you can make some sense of it. So it's um, the uh, Aziz Ansari, Ansari character, uh, Tom Haverford. Uh, so he's the ref. Ah, now, I need to scene set that uh, his wife or former wife. Um, yeah, his, ex, his ex-wife, yeah. I think he said. Uh, ex-wife. I couldn't remember her, really. Yeah. He's gone off with uh, your man Ron, hasn't he? Your um, red meat, guzzling, wood Ron shopping. Swanson. Yes. Yeah. Um, and they appear very happy together, as far as one can tell. Um, so this becomes a bit of a, 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 pardon the sort of pun, bone of contention for um, Tom Haverford, who then wants to needle Ron and Ron's team uh, as much as possible to a ridiculous extent. Um, and uh, this is how he goes about it. Foul on number three for taking a number two on number four. <laughs> Roughing the passer. Double dribbling. That's a foul. That's a foul for touching the basketball. What are you going to do about it? Nothing. You fouled. You can't do anything. Okay. You're rejected. You're rejected. Oh, a 
the matter there, Ron? No players left? Yay, any team! Look at them go! Oh, come on, now you're openly cheering for the other team? Put my boys back in. You made me the ref, deal with it. You know what, take this uniform off. Oh, you don't deserve to wear it! Ron's ejected for molesting the ref! Oh yeah, I'm ejected? Tony, yes, what are you, are you doing? I'm ejecting you, you're ejected too. Oh, Everyone's yeah? ejected. She's ejected? Yeah! yeah. Oh. Go ahead, go! Well, that's the forfeit, and his team wins. No way! You won! Oh, man! Eat it! You see, I thought that was quite a good a good storyline premise there. That that, uh, and I thought that's how it was going to be. So, so I couldn't really remember the episode that you've got the Chris Pratt character Andy Dwyer, who's like kind of lackadaisical, disorganised, um, you know, really slack about the way that he operates, uh, managing the one team, and then mm. you've got Ron Swanson, who's really uptight and and rigid and and stayed and yeah. yeah and disciplined and all those. And I thought, you know, there, there was kind of they were going to develop that more a little bit. Maybe they did, and then they had to. It ended up on the cutting room floor. I don't know, but it was kind of a a shame that they didn't they didn't do more with that. And thinking back, the Aziz Ansari character, I love the Tom Haver- Haverford character. I do. I think he's fabulous. And that was part of the reason why I thought Master of None would be better than it was, or would be because he, he was like he's quite a snappy dialogue and that sort of stuff. But that didn't kind of translate for me. But um, and I'm always lost in basketball. I don't understand basketball, do you? I don't, I don't even know what double dribbling is. I, I, you know. Well, I, but I thought that was the joke that double dribbling is fine. Cause, I mean, because oh, okay, he was ejecting it? people for doing nothing wrong. It is safe from touching right? the basketball, which I knew. Oh, was but okay. you're not meant to touch. Well, it's whether you're moving while you you can stand see? still. Oh, see, I've just proved it. We don't all know I, basketball. All I learnt was from um, the Harlem Globetrotters, the cartoon, oh, years wow, ago. Yeah. But yeah. uh, you know, I probably need a refresher course. You learn from the best if you learn from them. Oh, they're amazing. They're still going, aren't they, Harlem Globetrotters? Oh, they? Yeah, still. I mean, obviously not those guys, but uh, no, probably refreshed. I think. I think yes. I think uh, they've been they've been rebooted, as they say. Yes. Um, uh, but, yeah, I, d- I don't know. I-, I did find, and I think this helps with the pace of the whole thing as well, the- I thought the scenes were quite snappy. Do you know? They- they kinda... Yeah, it didn't hang about. No. And I think I think that you can always give credit for that because it is, it is I think, both difficult um, to keep it snappy and, and um, you know, there's always that temptation to... Think, oh, we could just put this in, we could just put that in, we could just do that. And I think, you know, you've got to take your hats off to them for that, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't – and I suppose, does it suffer from having no frame of reference? I mean, it's, it isn't a British council. They they do things differently. Well, no, it's a bit like uh, I thought um, that uh, W1A – was only going to work for people who worked at the BBC. But anyone can identify this sort of world, a sort of um, uh, public sector or public service type mm, world, mm, mm. Um, where you're not, it's not about cutthroat uh, profit and loss. Um, there's a different uh, kind of vibe and ethos. Um, I think it's time to, uh, to, to go for a broke and go for scores. Okay. I can't remember who's Just- first. Do you, want, do you want me to go first, or do you no, want to go first? I, I, I know I'm scoring, so uh, I'm happy to say, or am I happy? I'd like to be more generous, but I'm, I'm going to have to go for two and a half down the middle. 50%, I, two and a half out of yeah, five. I think, well, do you know, I thought you were going to be around there, and I think that is quite generous considering you, I mean, I don't, I don't get the impression that you would go back to it. I mean, I know you're not a completist anyway, but even if even if you were, I don't, I, I don't not, think not you would. Not this decade, probably. No, you wouldn't. You wouldn't miss it if you never saw another episode again, would you? That's the feeling I'm getting. That sounds from. cruel, but um, no, because there'll be other shows to watch, and some of them with these performers in. Okay, I don't know whether I'm going to surprise you with my score, but I will give it a three. Ooh, I thought it might be three and a half. I didn't mm. think of four the way you were talking about it. No, and, and I, I, do you know, I don't, I don't, I've got really strange emotions about this one. And I don't really know what it is. And I watched it. Um, I was just looking actually while the clip was on. I was just checking because I, I said to you, I watched uh, the American Office. Mm. And um, 
There were nine series of that. And if I tell you that, you know, each each series went well into double figures. So you're talking 19, 20 episodes, wow. 24 episodes, I think, in one series. Love it. And, and I watched most of that. And this is a similar kind of thing. We're not talking six in a, in a series. We're talking much more than that. You know, we're talking to double figures. Mm. Um. And and watched it kind of like every night, you know, in bed. I kind of, oh, I'll have twenty minutes of that and watch that. And and so I kind of stuck. And I just don't know why. I, you know, like I say, I would concede that it's not the cleverest bit of writing. It's not um, the most subtle bit of acting. But um, I don't know. There's something that there's something I can't hate in it, and I don't know what it is. A certain you know? warmth and an affection you feel for it. Yeah. Yeah, I do, and I, I like I like the characters in it, and I like the people who play the cat. You know, from, from what I've seen of other stuff that they've done, mm-hmm. I like the people who who play the characters as well. So yeah, it's a three for me. Okay, Doug. Now I think you'll probably want to set me some homework for next week before I forget. Well, I'm, have you got a coin? Uh, what on my salary? No, can I, <laughs> do you take credit cards? What with these feet? Uh, yeah, um, <laughs> I don't think it'll work with a credit card. It would help would it? me. <laughs> Why do you ask? Well, because I'm torn. I'm a bit like Natalie and Bruglia. That's uh, the one. <laughs> no, you're nothing like her. Um, if I would never be torn between you and her, I think I'd choose her every time. Well, what about in this frock? What about that? <laughs> do I look, Don't do I look at anything push like? your chest out. It doesn't work for you, darling. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I'm torn between two. Um, can I just do a notional? Uh, if, if it's a coin toss, can I do it in my head? Because I was yeah, one of those if, people who never could do it. In the cool way at school. Well, I've actually written it down here. The two different, the two different things that I wanted to choose, and I won't okay. tell you what they are because the other one I'll do at some other time. But um, um, or you might do. You never know. Mm. Uh, so yeah, give me give me a heads or a tail. Go on, have a toss. And, oh. uh, I am. Um, no, you did your own jokes. Stop. You did no, your own not, jokes. No, you're, you're, doing, you're you're projecting onto me your own. Dodgy can I just joke. say? Can what? I just say? Because if you if, if people are listening to this, they'll know that we can see each other. Um, Sadly. because because we we have a you know some kind of video conferencing connection darling yes and you know he just he thinks that he can just waggle his eyebrows <laughs> and, and i'm not going to say anything about it and i think he's very much mistaken That's well i think i think you should have left it um anyway uh heads okay all right uh bear with me because i've got to go through me um my catalog now i found out what it is your catalog yes what's um, this little words there we are. <laughs> yeah, to pick an episode. Better oh, way. okay. I'm all right. I know what I'm doing now. Um, I would, if I said to you, um, Craig Cash. Not making, not ringing any bells. Okay. All right. Well, I will, I will, I'll, uh, I think it's, it's written by Craig Cash and Phil Mealy, I think, if my memory serves me correctly. And um, Craig Cash actually played, have you seen The Royal Family? Yeah. Craig Cash played Dave, the boyfriend. Oh, nice one. That's Craig Cash. Right. Um, and he he wrote a series um, which lasted for two se- seasons. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it was 13 episodes actually in total, uh, called Early Doors. And it was it was based around a pub. Um, and did you hear my wife sneezing then? Sorry, I do apologise. I heard something, yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, and... Uh, it's called Early Doors, based around a pub and the characters that frequent the pub. And it is no more complex than that. And um, I'd like you to have a bash at that one. It's Early Doors, Series mm. 2, Episode 1. doesn't have a title. Series 2, Episode 1, Early Doors, uh, starring Craig Cash and written by Craig Cash and Phil Mealy. That's your homework for next week. I hope you enjoy. Cheers. Cheers. Very funny. Very episode. Um, on anti-social media, we are... You said very comedy. sarcastic the way you said that. Then, but <laughs> I, I can't just... help it. Uh, you know, when I try and do irony, it comes out of sarcasm um, and so on and so forth. But um, uh, anti-social media, we are at Comedy Slab on Twitter. Do follow us there, please. And we are likewise at Comedy Slab on uh, the Facebook page, which we would... Uh, did I say follow or like for Twitter? Follow us on Twitter, like our Facebook page. Oh, or, I, I yeah. Know all, yeah. Adjust, adjust to taste as appropriate. Tick whichever inappropriate. No, not appropriate. Um, and uh, yeah, personal recommendation to friends, family, uh, gentlemen, gentlewomen of the cloth, uh, your exhaust fitters, wherever. And you can't get quicker than 
many types of exhaust fitter. Um, <laughs> wherever, whomever, uh, do recommend the Comedy Slab pass the word around. We're going for nothing less than world domination. And lastly, but in no way leastly, a, f- a five-star rating on uh, iTunes stroke Apple Podcasts would be fantabulosa. Thank you very much. I must, I must tweet Quick Fit in the week and see if they're interested in any kind of... Uh... <laughs> Product money, <laughs> money changing hands. Uh, yeah, uh, we are on Spreaker, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, uh, YouTube, um, Spotify. We're, we're going to be on a new platform soon, which is just about to be launched. But I can't actually tell you um, what it is. Um, oh, you yet. can tell me. Uh, well, I can, but I can't tell you now. Oh. Is, is what, um, because we've only just applied to, to be on it, and it's very strictly embargoed. Um, they said. If they if we tell anyone, then <laughs> uh, they said if, they, if we told both of our listeners, then they'd be really upset. <laughs> so so that one's coming soon as well. But all major um, outlets, is, oh. yes, are accepted. <laughs> yes, um, all major outlets are uh, are where you will find the comedy slab. Just simply put in at comedy slab. Best way to find us on most uh, media platforms. Indeed. I'm off to uh, hit my head against a brick wall to see if I can <laughs> knock some sense into myself. So I stopped it's, doing that. <laughs> You're not meant to laugh. What's German it, for Schadenfreude? He does. He <laughs> says they say, "What's it like doing the comedy slab?" And he said, "Oh, to be honest with you, it's like hitting your head against a brick wall." <laughs> you know? and, uh, and I know because I've I've done it I quite know what regularly. I'm talking about. Yeah, I know, I'm the man. I know, mate. I know. Before we go, I'm going to share share a secret with you because it is quite a warm evening. I'm, apologies, I've had the window open. Uh, while we've been recording this, but I haven't actually got any trousers on. Oh and no! Well, yeah, no, at it least gets it's worse. framed out of the picture I'm looking at. It gets worse. It's not, and no, I don't. It cannot get worse. I've got my pants on. I mean, I'm not. Oh, right. I'm not some, I'm not, I thought that I'm not was some kind of, was worse. No, I'm not some kind of savage. Really, take me for you thought um, you'd but, stick it out for another year. Oh no, that's a but, different joke. But. I, <laughs> <laughs> But it is an interchangeable punchline, to be fair. Um, no, um, but I've just realised that, that the backs of my legs are, are now stuck to this chair. So um, that I, we need to stop recording before I go anywhere near standing up, is all I'm saying. <laughs>